The next drum pattern is very similar to the first one. It's almost the same in that you count it the same one and two and three and four and. So it's still an eighth note strum pattern or a, sometimes called a quaver strum pattern. We're just counting one and two and three and four and. The only difference this time is that it's going to be down and up rather than just down strums. Uh, it, it has a slightly different sound and um, it's, not a, it's not an exact rule but in general what, if you're first learning if you play that first strum pattern in the verse and you play this one in the chorus it separates out the verse and the chorus so everyone can hear when you've gone from one to the other. So I'll show you what it is. Uh, I guess I'll do A, D and E for this one. That was the first group of chords I showed you. One and two and three and four and down and up. So once you start um, playing up strums, uh, you you might well a lot of beginners get this this sort of sound at first. And uh, sometimes that, that can sound nice when you get those separated out strums, but uh, the first thing you should try and learn is how to get uh, all the strings you want in one strum like this. Have a listen to the difference. Nice down strum. Nice up strum. Rather than... I'm exaggerating a little bit. But a lot of beginners find that's really tricky. They, they come in and say, well, strumming doesn't sound right. And it's usually because they're separating out the strings. Whereas what you want is this. A very quick remedy for that, if you find that your strumming sounds like that, is to try and strum a bit further than you need to. This is quite odd because most uh, most of the time when we're talking about good guitar technique we're trying to move our hands less. Strumming is kind of the exception. We strum a little bit further on purpose. Uh, something that really helps is if you imagine that there's ten other strings there or a whole bunch of other strings there and you're trying to hit all of them in one go. It means that you wouldn't just strum to there, you'd strum all the way to here. So I'm strumming from up here all the way down to here. Even if I'm doing it quietly and even if I'm not hitting all the strings, even if I'm just aiming for those three, or those two. So, swing your hand a little bit further in both directions. And the up strum should naturally have, uh, you know, fewer strings than the down strum. So the down strum, when I do the A chord, I hit most of the strings, so I'm actually muting the sixth string with my thumb. I hit all the strings, but the up strum, you just hear two or three strings. I'll show you this without a pick as well, for those of you that like to play without the pick. Uh, I guess uh, it's personal preference, but um, if you're strumming down and up without the pick, a lot of people strum uh, you know, a lot of people who do this very well strum down with the thumb and up with the fingers, like this. Down, up, down, up. Down with the thumb, up with the finger. So the down strum, the up strum. It can all be with the thumb, it can all be with the finger, but... That's a very common way of doing it, all like this. One and two and three. So that time I was doing uh, one big down strum with the thumb and the rest with the finger. Uh, a lot of the other, I'm not going to show you any variations on this one because a lot of the other strum patterns are this one but slightly different. Uh, so that's all I would recommend doing with this. Uh, I would recommend with this strum pattern practicing it at different speeds. So uh, don't worry too much about you know tempo and beats per minute or anything like that. Just do it, uh, you know, slow, medium and fast. So slow might be like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And fast, well 
medium. Drum pattern is that's kind of like uh, that's as common as the first one. Let's do 